Welcome to a lesson on predicate logic. Not every statement can be analyzed using logical connectives alone. For example, we might want to work with the statement all primes greater than two are odd. To write this statement symbolically, we must use quantifiers. If we let p of x denote x as a prime and o of x denote x as odd, we can translate as follows. For every x, if p of x and x is greater than two, then o of x. These are not predicates since their truth value depends on the input x. Think of p and o as denoting properties of their input. The technical term for these is predicates, and when we study them in logic, we need to use predicate logic. It is important to stress that predicate logic extends propositional logic in the way quantum mechanics extends classical mechanics. You will notice that our statement above still used the propositional logic connectives. Everything that we learned about logical equivalence and deductions still applies. However, predicate logic allows us to analyze statements at a higher resolution, digging down into the individual propositions, P, Q, and so on. However, there is no systematic procedure for deciding whether two statements in predicate logic are logically equivalent. Let's look at an example. Suppose we claim there is no smaller number. We can translate this into symbols as there does not exist a number x for every number y such that x is less than or equal to y. However, we know how negation interacts with quantifiers. We can pass a negation over a quantifier by switching the quantifier type. As a result, the statement above can be written as shown below. The negation passes over the quantifiers, changing the quantifier types. Notice there exists changes to for every and for every changes to there exist. And then we negate x is less than or equal to y. The negation of x is less than or equal to y is x is greater than y or y is less than x. The statement for every x there exists a y such that y is less than x is logically equivalent to the original statement of there does not exist an x for every y such that x is less than or equal to y. We see this as another way to make the original claim. Let's look at a second example. Can we switch the order of quantifiers? Consider the two statements. For every number x, there exists a number y, such that p of x comma y is true, and there exists a number y for every number x, such that p of x comma y is true. Are these logically equivalent? These statements are not logically equivalent. To see this, we provide an interpretation of the predicate p of x comma y, which makes one of the statements true and the other false. Let p of x comma y be the predicate x is less than y. It is true in the natural numbers that for all x, there is some y greater than x since there are infinitely many numbers. However, there is not a number y which is greater than every number x. Thus, it is possible for for every x, there exists a y such that p of x comma y is true, while there exists a y for every x such that p of x comma y is false. We cannot do the reverse. If there is some y for which every x satisfies p of x comma y, then certainly for every x there is some y which satisfies p of x comma y. The first is saying we can find one y that works for every x. The second allows different y's to work for different x's but there is nothing preventing us from using the same y that work for every x. In other words, while we don't have logical equivalence between the two statements, we do have a valid deduction rule. There exists a y for every x such that p of x comma y, therefore, for every x, there exists a y such that p of x comma y. That is, if there exists a y for every x such that p of x comma y, then for every x, there exists a y such that p of x comma y is always true. This is sort of like a tautology, although we reserve that term for necessary truths in propositional logic. A statement in predicate logic that is necessarily true gets the designation of a law of logic or sometimes logically valid. I hope you found this helpful.